Hi, grade 11's last question for parabolas and straight lines. Now, this question I've included because sometimes they will include a more problem solving or practical question. Um, and so this is a little bit more like that. So it's not necessarily difficult, it's just different. So this question says below is a picture of the Blochrans Bridge, which is a bridge along the N2 and the Titicama Forest. And it says this base of the bridge is represented by the origin. So what they're basically doing, let me pick a better color. What they're basically doing is they're putting an axis over there and over there. And as you can see in the picture below, they're graphing that as a parabola. So this is maybe what engineers would do when they're building their, their graph, their bridge. So it says the height of the arc in meters y above the base of the bridge is approximated by a curve. So as you can see, here's my base of my bridge, and that curve has this formula which or parabola. And hopefully you'll have a look at that. And I know those numbers aren't very nice, but I'm hoping that you'll see that this is the turning point format. This is y equals a x minus p squared plus q, which means I can immediately tell you my turning point. My turning point is I clearly moved 128 units right. So this d will be 128 and then 56 meters above the... I suppose the bottom of the, the bridge. Now it says line AB, which is here on top, represents the road. So the bottom of the bridge is the parabola, and then above that is the road. Right, it says give the equation of the line AB if you're told that the top of the bridge is 62 meters above the base of the bridge. So it says give the equation of the line AB if you're told that the top of the bridge is 62 meters above the base of the bridge. Now, if you have a look here, the question is where's the base of the bridge? So it says this is the base of the bridge there. And so now they're telling you that the top of the bridge is 62 meters above the base of the bridge. So this isn't meant to be a trick question. This literally just means to say that the line AB will be equal to y Sorry, that wasn't meant to be a 2. The line AB will be the equation y equals 62 because here's the base of the bridge and it says the top of the bridge is 62 meters. So this A is at 62. So it's only one mark. It's not meant to be tricky. And I think that's the important thing in these questions. They look difficult, but their bark is far worse than their bite. They actually aren't that tough. Now the question says, how high above the Blokant River is the highest point of the parabola D if the base of the bridge stands 160 meters above the river. So this is a little bit more complex. And then it says, how high is the Blokant River, the highest point above the parabola? Now, I already have said that the highest point above the parabola is 56 meters below the base of the bridge. But then it is said that this base of the bridge is a further 160 meters above the river. So you've got 160 meters above the river begins the bridge because the bridge kind of spans from one mountain to another mountain and then 56 meters. So how high is it? It's 56 meters plus 160 meters, which is 216 meters from the river to the top of the bridge. Well, no, sorry, to the peak of uh, the arc of the bridge. That's why that one was two marks. Now I've just reposted that picture here because now it says what is the distance between the two endpoints OC. So it's asking me what is this distance between these two endpoints. So you have to say to yourself, well, what do I need to know then in order to work that out? Well, those are your two x-intercepts. So if I can work out my x-intercept, I know this one, this one is at the zero. The question is, can I work out that x-intercept? And I can because I know the formula. I know the formula is y is equal to negative 56 over 128 squared x minus 128 squared plus 56. Now, this is not a particularly nice formula and it's got lots of big numbers, but there's nothing wrong with big numbers. We can always use our calculator. Now, in order to find our x-intercept, y is 0, and there's two ways to do it now. I'm going to do both ways, so I'm going to put a line down the middle of my page. The first, I suppose, more difficult way to do it in a way would be to multiply out. So 128 squared, if I work that out, 
oh gosh, it's one sixteen thousand three hundred and eighty-four. And then if I square my bracket, it's x squared minus two hundred and fifty-six x. Well, let me I'm gonna run out of space. Um plus sixteen thousand three hundred and eighty-four and then plus 56. So what have I done there? All I've done there is I've cheated and went a bit fast. I've multiplied out this bracket. x minus 128, x minus 128. I multiplied that out and collected up like terms. Okay, now if I continue, I get negative 56 over 16384 x squared minus Sorry, that's actually plus 7 of 8x minus 56 plus 56. So what I've actually done there is I've just distributed. And I just used my calculator because those numbers were so nasty. Now if I continue, these numbers look absolutely terrible, but they're not too bad in the end. This is 16384. And my constants cancel. My 56 and my minus 56 cancel. And so actually I get something that is at least easily factorizable because I need to take out a common factor of x. Now I know that I'm right then because it means x is equal to 0 is one of the solutions to this, which I know it actually is, so that's really good. So from here x is equal to 0 is one of the solutions, and from here I would say that 7 over 8 is equal to 56 over 16384 x, and then I would just divide both sides by 56 over 16384. So I would completely use my calculator there and just go 7 eighths divided by 56 over 16384 and see what the calculator says. Unfortunately, this lands up being something really easy, which is 256. Now, once you've done all this in a test and exam, you kind of have to wonder for three marks, are you really sure that this is what I needed to do? So it begs the question, was all this working out necessary? Well, I now know that this is 256, and I can answer the question that OC, the distance from OC is 256. Now, the reason why I did all this is that I often find in a test or exam that we launch into what we have to do and we don't think. I need to look at this mark allocation. For three marks, that was a lot of work. So what were the easier ways? So I'm just going to erase this for a second because there were far easier ways. Okay, now that I've erased that all, what were the easier ways? Because that took forever. Well, first of all, don't ever forget symmetry. We've seen that that particular line there was at 128. We wrote down the coordinates of D was 128. And so very, very quickly, that's the middle. So if that's 128, that's 128. So C will be at 128 times 2, which is 256 along the x-axis. So that was probably the easiest way to do it. So therefore, OC will be equal to 256 meters. Now that's a far, far, far better solution than the whole long solution we did a second ago. The reason why I did it the other way first is that I think that's what we do in an exam and we've got to make sure that we stop and look at the at the mark allocation and then as soon as we get like going too far we must think mm, is there an easier way now of course if you didn't see the easier way did you see it wasn't that long to do the other way so don't worry if you do something in a more roundabout way than could have been done okay um I think I'm not there's another way to do it but I don't think it's actually any easier this way is probably definitely the best and so note to self don't ever forget the symmetry of a parabola very very useful that axis of symmetry much well, that would have saved us a lot of time in a test exam if we saw that first okay on to the next question what do we know so far let me just fill in what we know we know that's zero we know that's 256 I know that this occurs at 128 56 Right, it says, if the supporting column represented by EF, so there's a supporting column, I also know that this is 62 meters. So for example, F is 62 meters above the base of the bridge. It says EF is positioned 54 meters to the left of D. So this is D. Let me just change color. 
this is 54 meters to the left. Now that means I can work out what E's coordinate is. Because if I take 128 and I'm minus 54, I get 74, which means I immediately know the coordinates of F. I know the coordinates of F is also 74 for X, but I know the Y value really was 62. So it says if the supporting column represented by EF is positioned 54 meters to the left of e, D, how tall is this column to the nearest meter? So all I need to know this is exactly what vertical distance, what questions we're doing for vertical distance. I need top Y and I need bottom Y. So first of all, I need to know what is the Y value when X is 74. So I would, I probably wouldn't have to show any working for that 74 because it was fairly easy to work out just using your calculator. So let me work out my y value at e. Now it's set to the nearest meter so I get the y value being 46,033 carrying on. Now I don't really mind about those decimals because ef will be top y minus bottom y and top y is 62 and I'm in a minus 46. Now that 46 seems fairly plausible. I mean, if it was a negative y value, I'd worry, or if it was bigger than 62, I'd worry, but it seems fairly plausible. And so when I round off to the nearest meter, I actually get 16 meters. The actual answer was 15, 9667, blah, blah, blah. And so it's set to the nearest meter, so that column length is 16 meters, which seems fairly reasonable. Okay, and my last question, average gradient. What is the average gradient between E and D? Now again, this is just a three mark question because it should be fairly easy for us. Average gradient is change in Y over change in X. And fortunately, I already have these all these coordinates that I need. So the value at D was 56 minus 46,03, if we round it off to two decimal places, divided by 128 minus 74. Now I'm obviously I'm obviously going to get um, a horrible number, and so basically what we do is we just round it to two decimal places, and I get zero comma one eight. Now that's positive, but it's quite shallow. So if I look at where this average gradient would be, it would be the straight line joining E and F. So it should be positive, and it does seem quite a shallow line, and so that's probably right. Right, and that's the end of the more complex problem-solving type of question that you could get. Um, other than that one where we would probably launch into doing a long calculation that we didn't need, I really encourage you to see this question as not nearly as threatening as I think it might have looked in the beginning. And that is the end of parabolas and straight lines. So we'll come back to more of them when we mixed all the functions together, but for now we've pretty much covered every question that I could possibly think of. Okay, well done.